And this is interesting because this is why Brent and I actually started this show during COVID. I was actually working with quite a prominent conspiracy theorist in the UK, a very well-known shell suit wearing one. And then obviously they started denying COVID and refused to look at any evidence that went against their narrative. This really sort of disappointed us. And off the back of that, you've, you've seen a rise in people manipulating that conspiratorial avenue that Russell Brand, Jordan Peterson, Lawrence Fox, and people like that. Grifters, basically. Thank you. That's exactly the word we were looking for. Financial grifters, yeah. This is the point. They are going to people who are vulnerable, who are looking for answers, and they're giving them answers. Now, these answers aren't correct, but these answers provide some sort of psychological comfort or barrier from scary reality, basically. I mean, what's your opinion of the, the rise of these people? I think if I had to name a moment where everything happened, it was when Kellyanne Conway, who was Trump's spokesperson, used that term alternative facts. Until a certain moment, there was something which was basically approaching provable truth or provable facts. You know, obviously you can dispute it and argue it, but essentially there was. And I think since that moment of alternative facts, we've gone into a world now where more and more Everyone has their own truth, and there are two truths. And James O'Brien on LBC talks about the footballification of life. We are tribes now, yeah. and, and very much conspiracy is about joining a tribe. You know, it makes you belong. And once you're in that tribe, if you believe your tribe's truth, whether it's right or wrong, you just, you know, it's like a football team. You think, no, nope, that's my lot, and someone said something against my lot. So that's the problem with it. And I think what I've worked out from doing this book is that essentially shit happens, weird shit happens in this world. Yeah. The world is unlucky darts for a lot of people. It's like a scary, complex place. And I think, especially when there's times of trouble, financial trouble, political trouble, as humans, we don't like chaos. We hate it. We like order. We're naturally drawn to order. And conspiracy theories tend to give you a sense of order. They give you answers to things. But I think these people like Fox and, you know, the usual suspects and David Icke and people like that have realised that they can make a vast amount of money by, frankly, peddling snake oil to vulnerable people. I think when I started doing this, I'd probably be a lot more rude about people who believed in conspiracies. But I think having written in the book, or if anything, people that believe in conspiracy theories tend to be maybe a little bit smarter than some. They certainly think too much. Yeah. But often they get maybe the wrong end of the stick or they are persuaded by charlatans. Yeah, yeah. And so I have no difficulty in working out why people go down that rabbit hole, why people get stuck in it. And I just feel nothing but sorry for people that do. What I do have a problem with is people that know that it's bollocks and, and spend a lot of time making a lot of money. Some dare call it conspiracy.